Hello guys. So in this video, I will try to summarize this paper titled Sequence to Sequence Learning with Neural Networks by Satskivar, Vinyal, Squawk, Wheelie, right? So this paper is basically uh, introduced the encoder decoder architecture for language translation. And this uh, while experimenting it, they considered language translation from English to French, okay? So I will summarize this entire paper uh, the technicalities involved in it and the architecture involved in it in this particular video okay so let's get started so i have already explained the basic sequence to sequence and encoder decoder architecture in my earlier video so if you haven't watched that uh, please go back to that video and watch it to have an understanding broader understanding of what encoder decoder architecture is and how it works okay and prerequisite for this video is that uh, i assume that you already know lstms how the lstm works okay so let's get started with this so they took the language translation from english to french right and they considered total 160000 english words that's the vocabulary size for the english that that they considered english vocab of size 160000 and a french vocab had 80,000 words in it. So this is what they considered to train this language translation model from English to French. Okay. So what they did? They converted each of these words in the vocabulary, English and French vocabulary into numerical representations. Right. So they converted this into numerical representations. But for the English vocabulary, which is our source language, they converted each words in this vocabulary into a thousand dimensional embeddings. Right? Thousand dimensional embeddings. So, how did it thus? Did it? They introduced an additional embedding layer before just feeding those inputs at time step t to the LSTM blocks. Okay? At the encoder part. So, this is the vocabulary english vocabulary has 160000 words french vocabulary has 80000 words okay now coming to the architecture so how the architecture of language translation looks like with this particular paper okay so they had something called as encoder block they have something called as decoder block okay so the input to the encoder block will be embedded words embedded words and these will be of thousand dimensions okay so each word in the english vocabulary is a vector of thousand dimension okay or in other words it's a thousand dimensional vector each word is a thousand dimensional vector now what this encoder does this encoder produces the output and we call it as context vector context vector so when this context vector will be produced so let's say we have multiple sentences sentence 1 sentence 2 up to sentence m okay so let's say we have m sentences which needs to be translated to french sentence 1 in french sentence 2 in french sentence 3 in french and sentence m in french so we have the respective translation as our actual value y and the sentences for the English language will be called as X. These are the inputs. These are the actual outputs. So what they did, they tokenized these sentences. When I say tokenized, they converted them into words. And then those words are then converted into numericals. Those numerical representations of the words are in turn converted into thousand dimensional embeddings each. Okay. So that's what these embedded words are. Then at any given time step, for one sentence at any given time step, one word is fed as input. X1, it will be a thousand dimensional vector. So I am talking about sentence one. Okay. So X2, input at second time step, this is a second word. This will be again thousand dimensional embedded vector. So on and so forth up to the last XT, which is again a thousand dimensional vector. And once the sentence input sentence one is done, once it is completed, 
they provided the input with a special token called as EOS. So, this EOS stands for end of sentence. Okay, EOS. So, once this end of sentence is encountered at the input end or the encoder block, we were able to get the context vector as output of encoder block. Okay, so what we did next, taking this context vector as input to the decoder block, we started to produce the output. And what are those outputs? These are our predictions y hat 1, y hat 2, y hat 3, up to y hat t. And in the end, we go on predicting this till we predict EOS token. So, again EOS is an end of statement or end of sentence token. So, to produce the context vector, we took the inputs till we encountered the token EOS and to stop the decoding part, we go on decoding till we encounter or till decoder predicts the token EOS. So, this is one way. The other way to stop decoding is to specify the length of the decoded sequence. So, let us say we want the output sentence to have 10 tokens or 15 tokens. So, once the decoder has produced 15 tokens or has 15 predictions, means 15 time steps, we can stop the decoding process. So, there are two ways. So, in this paper, I think they have considered end of statement as the token till then they will decode it. Okay. So, this is the basic architecture of this particular paper. Now, coming into technicalities, we know that this encoder and decoder, these are our LSTM blocks. LSTM blocks, right? So, this is also LSTM block and this is also LSTM block, correct? And each LSTM block, as you know, has four hidden layers, four hidden layers in order to compute three gates and one candidate for replacement. So, I have explained these things in detail in my LSTM playlist. Please go and watch that. Okay. So, now that we know N, it has the architecture has three components encoder block, decoder block, and a context vector, right? How many LSTM blocks were there at each block or each component? So, encoder has four LSTMs stacked on top of each other. Stack on top of each other. Each hidden layer in each LSTM block is of thousand dimensional, thousand dimensional hidden layers. Okay. So if you just take one LSTM block, so it has four hidden layers, correct? So each hidden layer in turn, these hidden layers are our neural networks, right? So, each of these hidden layers are composed of 1000 neurons. So, that is what this 1000 dimensional hidden layers represents. So, since we have 4 hidden layers, each hidden layer will have 1000 neurons. Okay. So, one LSTM block will have 4000 hidden neurons. Okay. And as such, we have 4 LSTM blocks stacked on top of each other. So, when I say stacked on top of each other, so let us say we have input at time step 1. This will be passed through an embedding layer first to calculate 1000 dimensional embedding vector for this input word. Then this embedding for this input word will be passed to LSTM block 1. And then the output of this will be passed to LSTM block 2 and LSTM block 3 and finally to our LSTM block 4, right? And from LSTM block 4, we will receive our context vector and the activation function at that particular time step. So, since we are dealing with first time step, C1 and A1, we will receive. So, like this, if we unroll it for multiple time steps, we will have multiple LSTM layers here. And all at all the time steps, we have four LSTM blocks. Okay. So for the this will be for the second time step. Again, for the second time step, the input word will be passed to the embedding layer. These embeddings will be fed to LSTM block 1, 2, 3, and 4. Correct. 
and this context will be the context from the previous time step will be input to the current time step along with the context we will also feed the input at that particular time step which is x2 right so this process goes on up to we reach the end of sentence token okay once the end of sentence token is received whatever context we have here ct and at so this will be the representation of the input vectors from x1 all the way up to xt and this thing we call it as our context vector okay so this is our context vector so now we have our encoder block and how we also understood how it produces the context vector okay now after the context vector is generated we start with decoding step okay so let me just push this down a bit okay let let me just push it down a bit okay so that it will be easy for me to explain it and draw the things required okay right so i have some space here now once we have the context vector so i have my context vector now let me just call it as cv from encoder encoder block so what i'll do taking this context vector as input my decoder block will start producing the output so it will produce the output at each time step y hat 1 y hat 2 y hat 3 up to y hat t and in the end let us assume it produces end of sequence end of statement token so that we know or the decoder knows that it has to stop decoding it this decoder block is also a stack lstm of four layers so this decoder if i unroll it if i expand it this is how it will look this is lstm1 lstm2 lstm3 and lstm4 so these are all lstm blocks and each of these lstm blocks in turn has same 1000 neurons in each hidden layer so this dimension is same as of encoder block okay so this is how decoder looks like and while training the encoder decoder architecture once we have received the context vector as input to decoder so while training what we do we have something called as teacher forcing okay so let us understand what do we mean by teacher forcing so at first time step let's say decoder produces the output y hat 1 it may be correct or may not be correct but for this we also have the actual value y1 correct so while predicting the second output for the second time step the input will be y1 so the actual value at the time step 1 will be passed as input to the time step 2 at the decoding step so x2 at the decoding step will be equal to y1 since we are forcing the decoder to take the correct input correct output from the previous time step time step as input at the current time step we call this as teacher forcing so what we are doing here we are forcing the decoder to take the correct output for the previous time step as input to the current time step right otherwise we would have taken whatever it predicted in the previous time time step as input to the current time step right so that will not produce the desired result we actually want the decoder to understand at this particular time step with this context vector we want to have y1 as our output in the previous time step but you have predicted y hat 1 as, a, as the output so this is what it does so this method is called as teacher forcing okay so this is just a term you can remember at least if you remember the technique that's enough you don't have to remember the name but if you are going on any interviews you may be asked what do you mean by teacher forcing and where it is used you may be asked okay so it's good to know so once you do this you do the same thing for all the time step so at time step 3 the input will be y2 at time step t the input will be y t minus 1 okay and in the end 
we will think that it has produced EOS token. So, we will stop decoding process. Okay. So, this is how the training is carried out. So, what happens? We will convert the vocabulary into embeddings of thousand dimension each. We will pass in each input sentence to the encoder and we will arrive at a bottleneck called as context vector. And taking that context vector as input to the decoder, our decoder will start producing the output. While training, while still in training process, the actual output at the time step will be given as input for the next time step. So that while doing back propagation and updating the gradients, decoder understands that, okay, I have predicted this as my output at this particular time step, but the output is something different. The intended output is something different. So, in that way, the optimizer will calculate the gradients and it will help it to update the weights or the parameters. Okay. Now, we will look at the actual architecture, how it looks like. So, this is how the actual architecture looks like. So, I have expanded it for four time steps, but you can unroll it for t time steps. Or if this looks complicated, you can just consider this particular block here. So, each of them are LSTM blocks. Okay. Let me just write it. LSTM block 1, LSTM block 2, LSTM block 3, LSTM block 4. So, each of these LSTMs have 4 hidden layers and each hidden, hidden layers will have 1000 neurons in it. So, that is what I have told earlier. The decoder also looks similar. Right. So, it has 4 LSTM blocks 1, 2, 3, 4. And this will be our output y hat 1, y hat 2, y hat 4. Correct. And the output activation is softmax. So, this is something which we have to discuss now. So, why we have softmax? As I have told you, the output vocabulary of the French language has 80,000 words. Correct. So, we have to predict the output at each time step one of the 80,000 words as our output, correct. So, this softmax will be spread across 80,000 words, the output at, at each time step. So, this y hat 1 will actually be a softmax output across 80,000 words of French language. Then what we will do? So, I hope you guys know softmax, right. So, let me just quickly tell you. So, what happens? This softmax will return the probability of each word out of 80,000 words, right? What's the probability of this first word being the output? What's the probability of second word being the output? What's the probability of third word being the output? All the way up to what's the probability of 80,000th word being the output, right? So, we will have the probabilities. Word 1, probability of word 2, probability of word 3, like this, all the way up to probability of word 80,000. So, what we do? We take the max probability. So, let us say the max probability is for the word 2 and this will be our output y hat 1. Right. So, for this we will take np dot arg max and we will have the soft max function call here along the 80,000 vocabulary. So, this is how we take the predictions at each time step. Okay. Now, training during training process, I told you, right? So, this is the predictions at each time step. But the input at next time step, that is x2 at the decoder end will be equal to y1. So, you, you, you hope you are trying to correlate it. This is the actual or desired output at time step 1. Right, and then it will produce y hat 2 after passing through softmax. Sorry, my bad. Y hat 1, y hat 2 should be on top of softmax, not here. Okay. So it should be y hat 3 and it will be y hat 4. Okay. So at time step 2 input for decoder will be actual value at time step 1. Similarly, at time step 3, x3 will be equal to y2. Okay. And similarly, x4 will be equal to y3. In general, what we can write? We can write at decoder end, 
x t will be equal to y t minus 1. Then we will calculate the outputs at each time step. And for how long we continue calculating this output? Till the decoder outputs EOS token. Once we get this EOS token, we will stop the decoding. So, what do I mean by we predict EOS token? Again, this will be on the softmax, right? So, let us say for uh, once we are uh, com coming at time step 4, let us say y hat 4, it is again a softmax, right? So, it has probabilities for each of the words. Similarly, it will have probability for EOS token also, right? So, uh, let us assume at this particular time step 4, the probability for EOS token is high. So, our y hat 4 will be EOS. Okay. At this particular time step, we will stop the decoding process. Okay. Since we have a softmax layer, we will make use of the associated loss function. There is something called as cross entropy. We are treating this sequence to sequence or encoder decoder architecture, the output as our classification problem. So, it is a multi class classification problem where we are predicting the classes out of 80,000 word vocabulary. So, we have 80,000 classes, we are predicting 80,000 classes at any given time step. Okay. So, this is how it is trained. While testing it out, so I told you about training and what do we mean by teacher forcing method employed during training, right? So, teacher forcing method is nothing but supplying the actual output at each time step, right? So, x2 equal to y1 in general, x t is equal to y t minus 1. So, this is what this is what teacher forcing is about. But while testing, what we do? While testing it out, we supply the x test input, pass through embedding layer and then compute the context vector, supply that context vector as input to decoder layer and we will start decoding it. So, we get y hat 1. This is during testing, okay? Just remember. During testing, what we do? Whatever predictions we get at each time step, those predictions will be fed as input to the next time step. So, this x2 will be y hat 1. So, see that there is no teacher forcing during testing. Why? Because we assume that our architecture or our network has already learned during training period by teacher forcing and we are trying to Test out its learning, how much it has learned and what is the performance. Okay, So, that is what we are going to test in the testing phase. So, x2 will be y hat 1. Now, we will get y hat 2 here. So, this y hat 2 will be fed as input at x3. This will be y hat 2. So, this will go on and on up to we get the output as end of sentence token. So, x4 will be y hat 3 and let us assume y hat 4 will be EOS token and then we will stop decoding or generating the output words at the testing phase. Okay. So, this is how they set up the network and trained it. Now, coming to some intricacies involved within this architecture about how many parameters there were in total to be trained, how many epochs they trained for and uh, what was the optimization algorithm? Let us see them one by one. Okay. So, about the details on the training. So, training phase details. So, what were those? So, the first one. So, we already know the vocabulary of English. So, it is 1,60,000 words. So, vocabulary of French, it was 80,000 words. Okay, and each of these words were converted to embeddings. Only English words were converted to embeddings of thousand dimension. Okay, and then after embedding, what we saw? We saw four layer stacked LSTM. Stacked LSTM. So, what I mean by four layer? There are four LSTM blocks at any given time step stacked on top of each other. So, this is how it was trained and this four layer stacked LSTM is at both the ends encoder and 
decoder okay then coming to the dimensionality of the lstm blocks so each lstm blocks as you guys know has four hidden layers and each hidden layer had 1000 neurons in it right so hidden layer dimension is 1000 neurons so you can call them as neurons or nodes or cells okay so each lstm block will have 4000 nodes together why because each hidden layer has 1000 neurons in one lstm block and one lstm block has four hidden layers so that's why we have 4000 nodes at each hidden layer now coming to the output layer at the decoder end output layer at decoder end the activation used is softmax and this is across the vocabulary of french language which is of dimension 80000 words okay so this is at the output layer and we employed a technique called as teacher forcing during training okay i have already told you what do we mean by teacher forcing method right so this is the setting during the training phase so once we are done encoding so when i say once we are done encoding once we have seen all the words in one sentence of the input language we will produce some output called as context vector and this context vector is composed of eight things in total so what are those eight things as you know we have four lstm blocks stacked on top of each other correct and you also know each lstm block will have the context at that particular time and the activation at that particular time right so we have ct and at at that particular time for each of the lstm block so we have four lstm blocks so two into four total eight things as context vector okay I hope you are understanding it. So we will combine CT80 from each LSTM block and arrange that as a vector and call that as our context vector. Okay. And then this context vector will be given as input to the decoder block of the encoder decoder architecture. And then we will use teacher forcing method and then apply softmax at the output end to calculate the probabilities across the 80,000 French vocabulary. So this is how the training is carried out. Now coming to the parameters. So you guys already know that LSTM has multiple parameters. Since we have four stacked LSTMs used in this particular architecture, there were total 384 million parameters to train. Okay. Params to train. So it's a huge model. It's a very deep neural network at that particular time. Now we have models uh, with 7 billion parameters, 8 billion parameters, so on and so forth, right? So there is no limit to the number of parameters that we are training nowadays, right? So at this particular time, when they were doing the research, this was actually a huge huge number 384 million parameters okay and they used total 8 gpus 4 at encoder end and 4 at decoder end and all these were used in parallel okay and the speed they achieved with 8 gpus 4 at encoder 4 at decoder everything in parallel is 6300 words per second combining english and french vocabulary okay so at this particular speed they had a batch size of 128 batch size for training was 128 and the optimization algorithm used was stochastic gradient descent so I haven't talked about stochastic gradient descent in any of my videos. I will uh, release a video shortly on different optimizers that we use in neural networks. Okay. So with this setup, 
total they trained for 7.5 epochs so what are epochs epochs uh, we said to say training is complete for one epoch when we have traversed through the entire training data set once so that's called as one epoch so like that they have traversed 7.5 times across the entire training data set so that's why i have written it as 7.5 epochs and total time it took for them to train is 10 days so they trained this network for 10 days for 7.5 epochs and in the end on the test set on the test set they achieved a blue score of 34.8 which beat the earlier benchmarks on statistical machine translation okay so this is greater than any of the earlier existing statistical machine translated models okay so this is this has actually beat the earlier records okay so this is about training and testing right so i hope you guys understood till now the in detailed architecture of encoder and decoder sequence to sequence learning as explained in the paper sequence to sequence learning with neural networks okay hope this is clear uh now i wanted to talk something else about let me see what it is yes so since they done uh, they did ex they did another experiment of reversing the input sequence so let me take one example so english let me take example of english to hindi in order to explain you what do i mean by reversing the input sequence okay so let's say i have the english sentence before starting this gets converted into shuru karne se pehle in hindi correct so what they did during training they reversed the input sequence instead of sending before starting as input to the encoder they sent starting before starting before so this is a reversed input sequence reversed input sequence and they trained it to produce this particular output so when they did this they achieved better results why not really sure okay so that's the black box part of the neural networks not really sure but one thing what could have happened according to them is so the context from the earlier words have appeared much before during decoding the sequences so let me see if i can explain that so if i have before starting and here it will be shuru karne se pehle correct so just bear with me till i write this karne se pehle so starting before starting right so starting will be translated as shuru karne correct before pehle so if you look at the distance starting and before pehle so if what happens if you just reverse it so starting before the output remains the same right so it will be shuru karne se pehle so what happens in order to predict shuru karne se it has to remember this starting shuru karne is the translation of word starting for before the translation is pehle the distance is somewhat reduced in some cases but in 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 case of long sequences the distances went on increasing and it basically remained the same but for some reason by reversing the input sequence the output improved a lot improved a lot okay so this is one of the experimentation what they carried out and 
achieved a blue score of 34.8 on the unseen test data okay so now if you have understood this i would request you to read this particular paper here so if i go to ask you so this is the paper that i have explained you guys so if you just open this pdf and then read read this you should be able to understand this entire paper without any issue okay so this is the simple one layer lstm what they have depicted but in real they have used four stacked lstm layers on top of each other both at encoder and decoder end okay so hope this is some this is of some sort of importance to you guys and you have understood it so i will in future i'll try to discuss more more and more research papers so that we will develop the capability to read and understand the research papers in depth okay so that's it for this video guys uh, if you guys have understood it and like the content please give it a thumbs up and share it among your peers uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye